Hi, I'm Joseph and I'm an artist and a writer. I'm here to talk to you about a new opportunity by Making Space for Nature. We're launching a competition for residents of Thamesmead. We'll be asking you to come out and explore the natural habitats of Thamesmead and potentially look at your home environment in a different way and then come up with an artwork in response. So today I'm going to walk you through some of the amazing landscapes within Thamesmead, explain to you the relationship between art and nature and tell you how you can take part. I've always enjoyed exploring woodland environments, but here at Lesnar's Abbey Woods I found something I wasn't expecting. This totem-like sculpture is by craftsperson Tom Harvey and they're dotted all around the woods here. All I know about this work is that it was created using chisels and a chainsaw to create this level of detail. These pieces are carved out of tree trunks and what I like about them is that they remain in situ in the woods. Also, they depict animals that you might find in this environment. As a result, they blend into their surroundings and surprise you every so often when you come across them. Artists Christo and John Claude are known for wrapping buildings, bridges and even islands. Their work is highly technical and takes years of planning. In 1997, 30 years after the original project was proposed, they created wrapped trees at Foundation Baylor and Barrower Park in Switzerland. The piece included the wrapping of 178 trees in a total of 55,000 square metres of polyester fabric and 23 kilometres of acrylic rope. The polyester was translucent so as the tree could continue to receive light. Wrapped trees remained in place for three weeks until all of the trees were uncovered and the material recycled. Talking about the temporary nature of their work, the artist stated, we make very stimulating things. Unlike steel or stone or wood, the fabric catches the physicality of the wind, the sun. The works are refreshing and then they are quickly gone. The work is also said to be about freedom because it lasts such a short amount of time, no one can own it. For me, the work is interesting because it is drawing attention to something that is already there, already interesting, but perhaps overlooked because we are so used to seeing it. So if you've got some spare fabric at home, why don't you experiment with how it catches the light and how it looks wrapped around objects, perhaps out in the environment or perhaps objects around the home? A source of inspiration for artists throughout art history has been the sky. Tacita Dean is best known as a filmmaker, however, her drawing and painting are also a vital part of her work. Her images of the sky and of mountains are always drawn onto a blackboard using chalk, gouache paint and pencil. As with Christo and John Claude, this suggests something temporary that may be erased at any moment. To me, the beauty of this work is its simplicity. Although she is recording recognisable features of the landscape, they are also able to be appreciated as random patterns if you look at their surfaces. You could come out into the landscape and look for patterns and textures on nature's surfaces that you hadn't noticed before, or you may find some inspiration in man-made surfaces. That's fine, what we build becomes as much part of the environment as the nature that was there before it. So, if you have a pencil and paper, then you have enough. So why not come out and try finding some surfaces and some textures of your own in nature? You could use chalk in other ways too, perhaps on the ground. It could be huge or really small, but either way it could be a really effective way to capture nature in the way that you see it. But just remember to take a really good picture before the elements wash it away. Another aspect of the artist's work is that she collects and groups items from the natural world. Four, five, six, seven, and nine leaf clover collection is a piece that she recently exhibited at the Royal Academy. She presented a collection of clover leaves that she had pressed and preserved over many years. In the same show, she also displayed a collection of rocks. In representing these objects that are made by nature itself, she's drawing our attention to their beauty and allows us to see them in a new way. You may have collections of your own from the natural world, or from your home for that matter. How about for the competition? you submit a display of your collection. Another example of gathering that has recently been in the news is Rob Arnold. Down in Cornwall, he's been gathering rubbish and plastic waste from the beach, and he's recently collected over 300 plastic flippers. 
So maybe you could make some kind of artwork out of recycled or waste goods. Here from the monk's garden at Lesnar's Abbey, I want to talk about another garden. Derek Jarman was a British filmmaker, poet and painter. He lived and worked in Dungeness, Kent. Derek would gather material from his daily walks along the coast, including pebbles, rocks, discarded fishing material and driftwood. He would then plant bushes such as gorse and valerian in shaped borders around these found objects that he would position in the garden. Combined, the plants and the objects became an ongoing, ever-changing artwork, life and art as one. The organisation Art Fund recently raised over £3 million to preserve the cottage and garden for future generations to enjoy. Once we're able to travel again, I'd highly recommend a visit. And now from Kent to northern Spain for a very different example of living art. Jeff Kuhn's puppy was first created in 1992. This monumental floral sculpture is created of a 40-foot stainless steel structure, floral membrane and living plants. The sculpture is permanently housed at the Guggenheim in Bilbao and requires year-round maintenance. The skin of the dog changes year-round dependent on what flowers are available and they might be begonias, petunias or geraniums. These are plants that you'll find on balconies and gardens all around the country this time of year. When I first visited the piece, I was really mesmerised by how large it was. And then I found it funny. And then I just found it a bit odd. The artist has depicted a puppy dog, a symbol of popular culture, and mixed that with nature. The result is an artwork that is both recognisable and unexpected at the same time. The artist says of his work, that it should be instantly recognisable and also that it should affect just as nature does. So if you have chicken wire, seeds, plants or a couple of spare pots, you could try creating a garden sculpture of your own. You could create an animal of your own or perhaps mould your sculpture on an object from around the house. Maybe you could even combine these two elements and come up with something new. Maybe you prefer the more subtle approach seen at Prospect Cottage Either way, there's so much potential to create art in your garden or on your balcony. Mm -hmm. And now, a bit closer to home. I'm on the Ridgeway which divides North and South Thamesmead. Now, if you've ever wondered why there's a perfect line as far as the eye can see, that's because directly below this is a huge sewage pipe leading to Cross Ness just behind me. It's here where local artist Natasha Bird first became interested in systems of waste and water infrastructure. Natasha explained to me that there's a relationship between sewage pipes and the London Tube Network. In central London, both sewage pipes and the tube pipes are in extremely close proximity to one another. The very creation of these transport lines were called into being by Joseph Bazalgette in Banking of the Thames in the 1860s. Natasha went on to create Embankment, an ambitious work created in 2019 that is three metres wide and two and a half metres high. The piece is made up of individual plywood frames and the walls are created through mulching, a process whereby Natasha ripped up used newspapers collected from commuters, submerged them in water and pulped them by hand. The journey of the material used to create the structure, those newspapers that have travelled through London's tube network, is referenced in the shape of the piece. It seems that on entering the structure the viewer would be totally emerged, their entire peripheral vision taken up by the work. They've essentially walked into a giant tube or pipe. The structure is modular, meaning that it can be taken apart and pieces can be reconfigured in different formations. Further, all of the material can also be recycled. I really like this idea that a piece of work can be broken down into parts and rearranged and has the potential to disappear altogether. Perhaps you could teach yourself how to mulch, creating your own structure or surface to work onto. All you need is some newspaper. Perhaps you could think about some pre-existing modular material from around your house and go on to create your own original artwork with it. Or, perhaps like Natasha's done with this sewage pipe, you could go out and explore Thamesmead and find another hidden feature to expose as part of your competition entry. And now from one structure to another.
I'm inside Stephen Turner's Exbury Egg, and I'd like to read a quote from the artist. He says of eggs that they contain, in embryo, the essentials for new life. They embody the idea of new birth and renewal. So in essence, the egg symbolises life itself. This amazing structure is moored here at Bow Arts Trust Lakeside Centre, next to Southmere Lake. It doubles up as not only a sculptural form, but also a home. Stephen often tours it around the country and lives inside for months at a time to promote a conversation around sustainable living in the future. To create this egg out of wood was an extremely technical and laborious process and was achieved through a collaboration between Stephen and the architect's Pad Studios. As like a real egg, this one is completely watertight and able to float. You might be inspired to use the egg as a starting point for your project. Maybe you could go out into nature and find other symbols of life and use that as your starting point. Now, I haven't mentioned photography and I know that's popular with people. So, you are more than welcome to submit a photograph, but please, when you do so, just let us know so we know what we're looking at. Also, if words are your chosen material, you are more than welcome to submit poetry or prose as your entry. Whether your entry takes the form of sculpture, drawing, painting, photography or poetry, there are just a few final details. First of all, anybody of any age is free to join this competition. Second of all, please make sure that you always take care of nature when out in the environment. And finally, please check up on social distancing rules before you come out into public spaces. Now, how to apply. You have until the 30th of June to make your submission. I will be running tutorial sessions over the coming weeks where we can meet online to discuss your ideas and any technical questions you may have. For more details on that and the judging criteria, prizes and how to upload your work, please go to thamesmeadnow.org.uk. Thamesmead, go wild for art in your environment.